The Edible Bean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Hensel Co-op. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to the Edible Bean School. Today I'm down at Ilderton, Ontario, catching up with Hinsel Co-op agronomist Josh Moffat. Josh, how's it going? It's going absolutely great. Every great day starts in an edible bean field. So. And it's a hot day too, and uh, we are in an edible bean field, a nicely emerged field of azukis here. Um, we are in the throes of edible planting. How's it going? Yeah, planting so far is going quite well. Um, there's a little bit of soil moisture still in the ground despite the drought that we're going through, um, but things are going pretty well. The hot, warm temperatures will get those edible beans out of the ground mm. quickly. So. And when they get out quickly, um, I guess the focus really turns to weed control. And uh, you know, what are you telling growers now, Josh? I mean, getting out there and scouting, and I, I know it's easier to kill a small weed than a big one. Yep, so scouting is absolutely crucial. As soon as you start seeing those, those edible beans emerge, we wanna go out and start scouting the field. Finding what we're dealing with early is great, and then we can make a plan to get those small and actively growing broadleaves. Now, what about weed stage? I mean, are we, more, are we more interested in the stage of the weeds than the stage of the crop? Yeah, so, so young and actively growing weeds, as we've, we all know and we've been told a million times, are much easier to kill. So. We, we are more worried about the staging of the weeds than we are the staging of the beans. You might see a little bit of crop injury from coming in early, you know, before that first trifoliate stage of the edible bean, but the weed control is much, much more of a concern than a little bit of crop injury early on edible beans. Now, let's talk about spraying. What about time of day, and specifically for the products that growers use on edible beans? Yeah, so, so time of day is super important as well. Um, sometimes with, with our products such as Reflex and, and Bazagran, we like to hit it when it's hot and sunny out. Um, that kind of goes a little bit against our, our previous comments in past years of, of you know, spraying after dinner or you know, worrying about some crop injury. So the best thing to do is to make sure you're killing those weeds. So you have high weed pressure, hit it when it's sunny and hot. Now, Josh, what about water volumes here? What do we need to think about on that when it comes to coverage? Yeah, with all post-emergent herbicides, I wanna use a lot of water. So 20 gallons is kind of a bare minimum that I, that I recommend for most growers. Um, 25 gallons is better. And sometimes in extreme cases, up to 30 gallons is a good idea. So lots of water gives you better coverage and better control on your weeds. The other thing I want you to think about when, when we're talking about coverage is maybe it's a good idea to add a drift and deposition agent. So something like Interlock works really well of making even droplets and, and just helping that coverage just that much more. Just mm. makes, makes it better weed control. What about surfactants? Where do they fit? What's that conversation? Yeah, so uh, many products such as Reflex and Bazagran need a good surfactant and the right surfactant for it to work properly. Um, Reflex, for example, needs a high surfactant oil concentrate, something like Shermix or Journey. Those are good products to be added with your Reflex to get the proper control. Now, what about tank mixes? Yeah, so, so when mixing, sometimes you want to mix, you know, Bazagran and Reflex if you have a broad spectrum of weeds out there like lambs quarters and ragweeds. So in this case, you know, Bazagran Forte, for example, has surfactant in it already. But with the addition of the reflex and higher water volume, sometimes you need to up that surfactant load a little bit. Um, the important thing about surfactants is it's a volume to volume calculation. So we wanna make sure we have enough surfactant as we increase our, our gallons per acre that we're using. There's many different uh, surfactant volume to volume calculators out there from, from many of our chemical companies that are really easy to use and help you make the right decision for how much surfactant you're using per acre. Tell me about, um you know, watch outs for other crops. Do we have to be wary when spraying a specific product on a specific class of bean? So super ironic that you asked that question, Burn, because we're in an azuki bean field right now, and azuki beans do not like bazagran at all. Um, bazagran and permit are two things that you do not want to spray on azukis. Um, sometimes you'll see them hold those azuki beans back a little bit, or maybe even keep them from flowering. So keep those out of the tank. For the other market classes, such as white beans, blacks, dark red kidneys, etc., those ones will are all relatively susceptible to Bazagran reflex permit, so you can use those those chemistries on those mm. crops, no problem. Let's talk about grasses. I mean, like you know, that th those post-emergent grasses, the things that we haven't been able to control. What do we need to think about when we're trying to tackle those? 
Grass control is super important once again. Everything's important, but this one's very important. So market classes like dark red kidneys and whites, we can't use glyphosate anymore as a pre-harvest desiccant. So we need something, we need to do a really good job of controlling the grasses right now. Um, kind of a thought for grasses is if, if you're gonna spray for your grasses, please split the tanks. So I wanna see you do a two pass approach. A little bit of antagonism or, or decreased efficacy of the grass herbicide can happen when you start mixing with things like reflex or basagram. So let's, let's think of one of two ways. The first way I want you to think is to, you know, spray your grass herbicide first on day one, mm -hmm. control those grasses, get that out of the way. And then you can come back right the next day, day two, and you can spray your reflex, for example. This is a good method. This kind of keeps the antagonism away and it'll have really good, good control of your weeds. The other method you can do, if we're at like this stage right now where we're seeing the unifoliate leaves right now, if there's broadleaf weeds out here, go get them. We want a small and actively growing weed once again, and broadleaves are very difficult to control once they get big. So let's, let's spray our broadleaves, and then maybe seven to 10 days later, we'll come back with our grass herbicide and then clean up our grasses. Mm. Hey, any final thoughts for growers? You know, when, when, when they've got questions on what they're seeing on the field and how to tackle it. Yeah, so if you have any questions, concerns, thoughts, or, or even, even you're just a little bit wary about what you're doing, reach out to your ag retailer or any of the chemical reps in, in Ontario. We'll, we're all happy to help you to make sure you're making the right decision. Right decisions are best mm -hmm. because sometimes bad decisions can't be fixed. So mm -hmm. let's do the best we can the first time. Great insights, Josh. Hey, uh, crop looks good. We will see you a little later in the fall. Perfect, that sounds excellent.